man. Oh, I remember this. This is a, a throwback one for sure. The LL Cool J uh, versus uh, Steady. Was it Steady B? And I think Schooly D was with him. Let's go back to the beginning of this. <laughs> what caused this this uh, incident to happen? Um, when LL blew up, they had um, when uh, what was that? Big and Deffer came out, and media was calling LL Cool J the king of rap. This infuriated a lot of rappers at the time. So they was the king of rap, but he never called himself that. He called himself the prince of rap, and Curtis Blow was the king of rap in the rhymes, but the media called LL Cool J the new king of rap. So while the Def Jam tour is going on, LL was the biggest name on the marquee and all the access on there, Public Enemy, everybody, Eric B and Rakim, LL closes the show. And it just so happened to be BDP was, uh, I think they were doing a show too or whatever and they they were cool with LL because MC Shan had a problem with LL so I think it was, you know, why are you going out to LL and this and this. So they were, they were cool with LL. And at this time, the Stop the Violence movement in hip hop was taking place. And KRS One was leading this, him and Red, DJ Red Alert. And when they had self destruction, which was part of the Stop the Violence movement that they had going on. And they wanted to get all the rappers on self-destruction. And LL Cool J would only do it if Cool Mo D wasn't involved. And they were like, LL was taking too much time about doing it. So Cool Mo D was a late addition to the song. And they were like, we went and got Cool Mo D because LL Cool J wouldn't commit to doing it. And LL would tell the story differently and say, no, they got Cool Mo D, who's dissing me on record, and his diss song right now is on the airways, killing everything, and here I come on the same song with him, I would look silly. So ego is what kept LL away. And they were like, no, nah, we ain't doing this, so they kept Mo D in there, and self-destruction was a hit. And LL wasn't, even though he supported the Stop the Violence movement, and he did a song called Change Your Ways, and all that stuff. So, and Change Your Ways didn't end up making it on the Stop the Violence album. It ended up being on. The uh, bonus disc of uh, Walking with a Panther. But anyway, doing one of these shows, some riff happened because Steady B is cool with KRS One and they felt that was a diss that LL Cool J wasn't on the self destruction and all that stuff and he felt like LL was too uppity about doing everything. So. They took it as an insult. And LL is known at that time, for the younger people who might not know, LL Cool J was known for not taking off his hat. You couldn't see LL's head. I mean, now you see that big dome everywhere. But he had a hat on all the time. And you never could see LL's head. And people didn't really pay attention to it. So it just became a thing somebody noticed. Like, man, we never see LL without a hat. LL is always wearing a, cat, a hat, a cane go. You never see him without it. And when the tour was over, Def Jam took him out to took everybody to like Hawaii 
and they were all out there and the big wave LL is in the swimming pool in the water not swimming pool but the beach he's in the water with the Kango on and a big wave came and knocked the <laughs> knocked his Kango off and everybody stood up like man we finna get to see him without his hat and he dove underwater <laughs> to go find it he would not come up until he found that hat he found the hat put it on and came back up with it and everybody thought they was gonna see him without it he was that serious when he do his interviews he would go in the bathroom put his hat on change hats and everything else no one could see him take his hat off and it became his you know his MO and to the flavor in your ear remix when he showed people his head for the first time and it just blew everybody away because no one had ever seen L Cool J head at that time so Steady B saw him at one of the shows and was like man look at this chump I'm gonna knock that hat off his head <laughs> And Schooly D was with him and was like, I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> you know, I don't like him either, but I ain't about rushing him. And then, you know, with self-destruction and stop the violence movement, they about to start some violence. And that ain't going to ride well with KRS-1. You know, it's that's not what he wanted to have done. And Steady B was just like, I'm just going to go knock the hat off his head and see what happens. I'm tired of him, period. So, he's supposed to be hard as hell, you know. He's like, he's phony. So, when LL came in there, you know, I guess he thought Scooby D was going to step up with him. LL had Bobcat with him. He had Cut Creator, and he got E-Love. And he's in the middle. So, it's three of them. They walk up. They was talking to, uh... God, I can't think of dude's name. They was talking to him on the side. And he looked at Steady B, looked at Schooly D like, you gonna go? And it's, 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 he just walked up and, to LL. And, but L and they saw him, the look in his face before he stepped up. They saw the look in his eye. They knew he was on BS when he was coming up there. And E-Love came and checked him. And he tried to swing on LL and like muff him and try to take his hat off. L is about six fold. Steady B is like five, six. So he tried to reach up and muff LL. E Love is right there on the side. E Love gave that boy. <laughs> I don't know if y'all know who E Love is. E Love is like LL's bodyguard since they was babies. He don't talk much. His face don't move. He keeps a still face on everything you saw. He's the guy that's in the videos. Tall black guy with the Kango too who don't talk. He's not too into everything. But when it goes down, E-Love is not the one to mess with. E-Love was putting f footprints. He had troop marks all over his face. Schooly D was there <laughs> to grab his boy and then Schooly D looked up and saw the look <laughs> on E-Love face and knew, like, you want to go there? <laughs> and then, so security came back there and locked it all down. They got escorted out of there. Schooly D asked Steady B, they crew. And Karras one was upset with Steady B for a minute over there. And they were all cool with Miss Melody, everything. He was, he's family. You know, and to have that happen was like inexcusable for him to try to rush LL Cool J. So they they squashed everything behind closed doors, kept everything cordial, had talks, you know, like we're going to sit down and do this all with conversation. So L didn't have a problem with him. <laughs> you know, L was, they ain't nobody heard L, nobody touched him. He tried to get over there and muff him, but to no avail. He was stupid enough to try to make a move. So you know that. <laughs> oh, silly. Silly cat. 
<laughs> Thought he was gonna muscle me. <laughs> no, I ain't having it. <laughs> so, anyway, I'm out. It's your boy Carcino. Follow the playlist too. I'm tired of people jumping on that. When you gonna do this? And we ain't already done it. Check the playlist first. I know it's about 300, but check them all. I'm out.